come, let us continue what we were discussing in the last lecture, the path programming. So, I will try to discuss the tool path generation, tool path verification, the uh, different uh, programming features that we have and then we will also see G and M code in this lecture. So, first is tool path. In NC programming, whenever the program starts to write a program, they use their knowledge to plan a path program in which they require tool path with proper cutting parameters is set. What is a tool path? It is a path that the cutting tool must follow. So, it follows this path and then come back to its home position that is the starting position. This path is usually repeated more than once. When it is repeated more than once, it is called a pass. For instance, in one go, if I suppose I need to cut this material down by 5 mm, but I cannot do it in one go, I will do 1 mm in one pass coming to home position, another 1 mm in second pass, 5 passes of 1 mm each would be taken. In general, this would not be exactly 5 passes it could be the 5 passes of varying depth of cut. That would be in a way it could be from 1.5 mm, then 1.4 mm, then 1.2 mm, 1.1 mm, then the last path might be something 0.5 mm because here we are also trying to get better surface finish. So, tool follows a different motion paths and it does it in different passes. So, that it completes the overall machine that is required. So, pass is one cycle, one cycle that the machine is trying to take to finally finish the part. Once the path is planned, then C programmers utilize their knowledge to generate details of the part, which includes the x, y, z coordinates of the necessary points of the part. and the syntax of the programming language that we are trying to use, the post processing of the program and using the program to produce the actual part. The NC packages generally provides the programmers with tool libraries that they can use to define various tools with proper tool geometric parameters. For instance, um, a programmer can define a drill or a cutting mill. Once the tool is defined, the tool part can be generated using the tool and part geometry. Nowadays, the CAM software such as Power Mill or Master CAM, they provide the complete simulation how the tool is moving and they provide also the information on what is the time it is taking to the overall machining. In additive manufacturing, it also helps us to get the time and also cost that it would take to produce this part. Depending upon the time it is taking, it will also calculate depend, uh, while we have the input of the material that is taken into account. So, costing is also taken there. Now, in the part programming, we have different programming steps, steps or the principles that it use. There are different kinds of part programs. I would say types of programming. First is absolute programming. Absolute programming means first the origin is defined. Absolute origin, what is my present coordinate? From the absolute origin, what is my future coordinate? From the absolute origin, what is the next value? So, each time x1, y1, z, z1, 2, x2, y2, z2 values would be taken from the origin only. So, here in the absolute programs, for each axis of motion, the origin is selected. The intersection of the x, y and z axis of the motion defines the machine origin which must be coincident with the part program origin. Once the origin is selected, all locations are defined with respect to origin only as I just mentioned. Next is the incremental programming. By 
by incremental program I means uh, it is not necessary to select the origin now from the current point to the next point now the next becomes point becomes my origin from there that goes to the next point each time we are putting an increment of the specific dimension that we are using so here the immediate advantage is that the programmed motion directly matches the actual motion of the tool because it starts from the last position of the cutter or the tool another step that is there is rapid positioning rapid positioning means it is a point to point machining positioning or rapid positioning system where we increase the machine speed so that we enhance the machine productivity it is majorly used in drilling and boring for instance drilling hole has happened at one place at a specific speed and it comes out rapidly it goes to the other hole it does the other hole rapidly it comes to the third hole it does this hole if this rapid motion is not there machine tool will go so slow and this is just a completely non productive time that is there so to cater this rapid positioning is very important step that is always put as an input in a machine program then we have linear interpolation linear interpolation means uh, the programming code helps us to produce straight line motions by allowing the corresponding machine slides to move at different speeds independent of each other for instance in a three axis machine the slide in x direction in y direction in z directions can move at different speeds that helps us to have an interpolation that is in a linear motion only most majorly in a two axis machines it would be always linear in a three axis machine it could also be linear but those are independent when i say in linear interpolation circular in interpolation is the counterpart so to achieve this motion a relative positions and velocities of two machines slides are initiated and maintained on a constantly changing basis but starting and stopping at a same time A special code is used in a numerical control program to indicate circular interpolation. So both the linear and central in interpolations are used to guide tool along linear and circular paths respectively. Next we have is a canned cycle. Canned cycle means it is a specific set of cycle pre-written or stored cycle. because it is pre written or stored that is why it is known as canned cycle where standard sub routines or procedures are followed which are taken from the library of the machine tool the examples include uh, the drilling tapping boring turning threading in which uh, the fixed or variable cycles could be taken the fixed cycles are there which are not adaptable to a specific user needs the variable cycles are there that could suit to a particular applications that a person or the programmer is trying to work on now we are different uh, dnc lang programming languages now in a cnc language statements what are the features number 1 is the language feature itself so language feature means the programmer defines the variables and arrays of the program for instance in a c language itself we do define what are the variables what are the arrays here also in the language we design what are the variables or what are the fixed parameters there that means variables arrays and geometric entities are defined here so we select accordingly so in a part programming language the programmer take the geometry of the part program from an engineering drawing or from a cad database to describe the path to be taken by the cutter so we have different kind of languages available cnc programming languages generally apt apt is automatically programmed tool 
where uh, the syntax is different from the very general NC programs. That is also one of the languages that is used. Now, talking about the language statements, we have geometric statements first. From geometric statements, I mean the description of the curves or the surfaces. So, in a computer aided design environment, the geometric information required by these statements is generated interactively when the user selects the surface to be machined when using an CNC software. Geometric statements should precede the motion statements in a part program, and also we have with us the tool statements. Tool statement means the tool geometry. Tool axis. And tool part tolerances. As I discussed, if I have a workpiece to be produced with a tolerance of maybe of uh, uh, 1.01 millimeter, the machine should have a tolerance 10 times of it. So, machine tool tolerances interfaces are very important. 10 times of it means uh, for 0 0.01, it should have a tolerance of 0 0.001. It should be more precise, the resolution should be lower. So, tool statements are there. Then what we have with us is the motion statements. Motion statements means these guide the tool into its motion. They provide information for the type of the machining that is are we going to do the PTP or continuous part or we going to have some direction of cutting, speed, feed rate and so forth. So, all these statements are the part of the motion statements. All these statements comes as a portion of motion statements. Next, what we have is arithmetic statements. As the name speaks, it is just addition, subtraction, just as in the Python language, we add or subtract something and we also can approach certain other functions such as we take square root, sign of something, these are thematic statements would be taken. Then what we have is repetitive programming. Statements that provide the looping of a system, branching of a system, the coordinate transformations. So, all this constitute the repetitive programs where we have a macro facilities that enables the programmer to deal with repetitive programming more effectively. Then we have output facilities. So, by output facilities I mean the cutter location, where is it, CL is cutter location. The part program forms a CL data which is stored in a file which is also known as CL file. It is usually stored uh, in ASCII format. Also sometimes it is known as binary CL file or BCL. In an attempt to reduce the file size and uh, to increase the speed of its post processing, the part program can also store in a binary cutter location system or CL file. So, then we have with us at last is the post processor statement. Which means the cutter location file or the binary cutter location file is written in the programming language syntax. This must be post processed by a selected post processor. The post processor here is hardware dependent, which is written for a specific controller. 
So, most of the controller accepts the G and M codes. Talking about the G and M code, this was the point we were trying to reach to understand what plot programming is and how are these code able to make the machine to understand how are the machines moving or how the tool should be moved, what should be the location, what tool should be selected, the different classes of it. As I said in different layers, the information regarding the motion, the annotations, the tool to be selected should be put. So, that is why we have G code and M code where the programming could be taken in different modes. It could be maybe a manual part programming. Manual part programming is just like you take an exam, you write the program in pen or you type the program exactly. G0, G90, G54, then you start the first uh, line of the program N1 and try to say this is the my position X00, Y00, Z00. When you try to make a program all manual, that is manual part programming. So, this is completely manual. Second could be a man part programming that is computer assisted. In a computer assisted program, whatever you are trying to do in a simple manual part programming, you are trying to use a software, right. This is generally a master cam software. Another advanced programming could be using CAD cam systems. which means not only the basic master camp program, one can use a complete CNC package to develop a program. This is similar to the second approach that is computer assisted program. But the benefit here is that the program uses the CAT database of the part directly and there is no need to translate it or import it into a PAN CAM program through the IGES or STEP file. Fourth method could be a complete manual input. That means the programmer uses the controller of the machine tool to input the data. It goes to the machine, type the program there at the machine itself and then they do it. They call it MDI, manual data input. The irrespective of the method that is used to create the NC part program, the instruction statement in the program must be in a basic code that is the machine controller unit, MCU, helps us to understand the basic code. And a conversion process that is done taken by the post processor is necessary when high level languages are used. So, existing code words that we use are generally n is for a sequence number, g is for a preparatory word or maybe a geometric information. F is for the feed drive. If I say F5, that means generally it is 5 mm per minute feed is given. Then S is for spindle speed. If I say S1000, that means 1000 rotations per minute speed is given. This is spindle speed. T is for the tool selection. That means it specifies the tool from the tool library on the machine tool, what tool is to be taken. Then we have M that is for the miscellaneous command. But these makes different layers to understand the different parts or different features of a program separately. Miscellaneous could be for a uh, maybe a center lathe or maybe for a, a machining center. 
if I say M6, it is selecting the tool. Then the miscellaneous operations have also different names. I could maybe define a few of them, maybe for example, G00 is a program, rapid point to point movement, G01 could be linear motion between two points, G02 could be clockwise circular motion, G03 is a counterclockwise circular motion, so on. More important among these are number 1 G90, that is when we choose the absolute coordinates. absolute coordinates G91 is incremental, then G54 cannot be missed which means work coordinate system. So many G codes are there, similarly we have different M codes as I said M06 is tool change, maybe M07 and M08 are for turning on and off the cutting fluid. This will make more sense when I come with an example in the end of this lecture, taking a geometry and uh, try to understand how the path program is written. Before that, I would like to discuss the tool path generation and tool path verification characteristics. Majorly, what we have discussed in this lecture and we will try to cover some other points. First, we have discussed is the steps in a tool path generation is recognition of machine surfaces. That means we try to recognize the feature. Next what we have is the actual tool path generation. Once the tool path is generated, we do not stop here because tool path verification is also important. We need to verify whatever we have generated is correct or not. I will put it here tool path generation steps. Tool path verification that I will discuss and also collision detection. A very important factor unless we detect the collision, the whole system can be completely damaged because tools when they collide a positive space it could create a critical damage to maybe the tool could break or maybe machine spindle could have a small flaw or small play in it. So, all of this could happen if the collision detection is not taken properly. So, as I mentioned nowadays there are uh, certain simulators or the simulations that you can see or visualize how the tool is moving, whether the tool is colliding with the workpiece itself, whether the tool is colliding with the, uh, the machine component or so. So, this also are to be taken care of. Recognition of machine surfaces that we have discussed in detail and tool path generation is the actual generation of the tool path where we try to store the path in the cutter location file. Next we try to see whether the path should be verified, how the path has to be verified. Now in the CNC program the tool paths that are supposed to guide the tools during the actual machining includes a lot of coordinate values that are impossible to verify manually. So, tool path verification has to be graphical or visual. 
the softwares help to simulate them actual machining processes could be taken so by displaying the cutting tool moving its tool path relative to the stock and jigs and fixtures that could be taken shaded images the different colors could be taken there this enables the cnc programs to spot any potential errors in the nc programs these animated or simulated tool parts generated by displaying the tool position and orientation using the cnc program data at various points of tool path creating frames storing the frames for playback have certain advantages we can check whether the cutter removes material from the stock or not next we can see whether the cutter hits it hits any clamps or so also in the verification we can see whether the cutter passes through the floor or side of a pocket or through a rib it is the passes through unwanted spaces then also we can see the effectiveness or maybe efficiency of tool path other advantages may be the rapid turn around or a program development rapid training for the potential cnc programs with without danger that how the tools would go how it would look like that is the visualization of that then uh, we have graphics display that uh, when the tool path is generated it can be verified here now important factor here is the collision detection collision detection is concerned with finding out if the cutting tool and its assembly that is a tool shank or maybe the tool collet or so collides with the components of the manufacturing environment that is it could collide with the work piece itself right or it could collide with the jigs fixtures spindles or so any of the components in the overall work environment that you have this intersection should be completely null generally what we use tools which are ball end or ball nosed so in a ball end or ball nosed tools generally what happens the directions of the tool for example this is a tool movement is taken to the normal of the direction of its movement so the calculation of the cutter offsets is achieved by finding the directions normal to the surface of the tool so once we have determined the directions of the normals then the tool offset by the radius of the cutter along with the normal vectors over the surface could be taken into account so before even calculating these cutter offsets that could be a suspected collision in the future so we have to generate a tool path that is to mill a surface parametrically cutter location points are generated using the surface definition and machining parameters these are located in our cl file so ball and cutter tip is directed to move in straight line segments to each point the fewer the points the more rough the resulting machine surface is however large point files should be avoided to minimize storage computation and milling time so now let us have a quick look on a g code program where we try to understand how the g code is written when i say g code it is g and m code both and we try to look at that how do the machining or the program is made this is the first part program where the g code and m codes are just ready 
So, this is a job on a lathe machine where circular machining is happening. So, the job rotates in a clockwise fashion and this is the machining that is happening. So, when we say about the code, the G and M codes have different functions as I said different layers are there for different operations, the annotations and everything are put in different parts. So, here what we have this N are the sequence number sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. It is a 9 line code where T indicates my tool selection T0101. That means this tool is selected. G97 means as I said it is the machine setting where spindle rotation is in clockwise direction. So, it is clockwise spindle rotation G97 and S is for spindle speed, spindle speed is 500 rotations per minute. Now, we have G42 which means that P0 point where the tool nose radius compensation is active that is selected. So, X0 Z0. So, this is the point my origin here on the figure. So, this is G00 and I have set my tool at the point 00. Now, comes the first step where G01, G01 means linear motion on and because the job is rotating like suppose this job is rotating and when the tool moves in a linear motion only it will keep on removing the material the job is rotating the tool moves only in a linear fashion. So, that is why G01 linear motion is given to the tool and it comes here at x 25 that means it goes 25 mm from here in the x direction this is x direction given here in the x direction the tool comes here now I will put this is my n 4. Now, since it has come to this position, now we say speed rate is 0 0.3, that means the speed is given as 0 0.3 millimeter per minute. And with this feed, this is the feed rate of the tool in this movement speed of the tool. When it says speed is the spindle speed, the rotation speed, this is the feed of the tool that is 0 0.3 millimeter per minute. It starts moving, and when I say G95 it means the feed or the revolution in milling and drilling. It is a kind of a milling operation, the lathe or the turning operation is kind of a subset of a milling operation only, it starts moving. Now, once the movement has started, but it is there at one position only, now we will give say okay in the y direction you start moving at some minus of y, whatever the distance is required. Here distance is 7.5 millimeter, so we say z minus 7.5 or this dimension, this direction they have called it as z direction. So, next is it goes to n 40 and this is the position where it reaches at n 6 that is the 40 millimeter dia and here x 40 z minus 15, this is another 15 is there from here itself that means if it is going from here 7.5 then it is going from here 15. What does this mean that this machine I would write it here minus 7.5 minus 15 and minus 35. This means this is absolute programming that is from the origin only it is moving towards the direction or the negative direct direction. This is absolute programming. Now, here again finally, we go for G40, G00, X200 and Z200 here the tool reaches here at the point P4 it starts moving here. Here we have reached the point P4, G60, Z minus 35, then we here we have at Z minus 25 we have reached the point P3, at Z minus 15 we had reached the point P2, at Z minus 7.5 we have reached the point P1. But this is how the G code is a language that is read by a CNC program that tries to understand it. Let us see another program here.
this is a program in which simply starting from here, this is my point number 6, it has written start point here already and I give the code G0, G90, G40, G21, G70, G94, G80, all these mean that we have given absolute coordinates, G90 means absolute coordinates and G00 that is we have a rapid movement also is activated here. All these codes have their own meanings. G54 is where I have select the work coordinate system. We talked about the coordinate systems that we select. Then we go to x minus 75, y minus 75, speed is given 500 and m3, m3 means this is a m code, m word means miscellaneous command where m3 means we say clockwise spindle start. Now we are at here at this position. This is our 0, minus 75 of x and minus x 75 of y. This is my start position here at the position 6. From here I start G43, which means tool length compensation is given. And Z100 and H1. From here the milling starts, you can see it is a solid body, for instance this is a solid body, here the tool starts moving, it interferes with the body and start cutting the abortion. So in this case, this was a solid body and this portion is being cut. Now this 20 mm is the depth that is being cut, 20 mm, so that is why Z is given minus 20, this which means in this body, the height of this body could be anything maybe 40 mm or so, it goes deep 20 mm and start cutting it. This is mechanically the things are moving in a motion, electronically is it, it is reading. This is what is a decision support system finally being handled by the CNC machines or the language that is being read by a computer numerical control machine in which now it says Z minus 20 and feed rate 100, it goes to this level. Here it goes at x minus 40, it goes to position 1 here. I would say P1, here it is here and it starts cutting. Now y40, m8, x40, y minus 40, it keeps on moving in this direction, then this direction, then this direction, it comes back to position 5, then comes back to position 6 in the end. This is how it goes. So this is uh, the code is being run here. And uh, finally, we say M30, M30 means that uh, the program end. I have taken some other examples as well. This is also one of the examples I have taken in which this is the absolute programming. This is a simple absolute program for this component to be cut. So this is was the component which is also to be milled. This portion that is 6 mm is to be milled throughout the component. That means the overall width of the components to be reduced by 6 mm. So this is an absolute program. I will show you the parallel incremental coordinates or incremental program here. In this case, you can see it starts, when this and it starts, it goes to Z minus 2 and F200. It is starting from here only. In X from 230, it goes to, to it here it is showing to 60. So here in absolute, it goes to the exact X minus 30 coordinate. Here it is going minus 260 from the present position which was at 230, it goes to the, it adds 260 or it subtracts 260 from 230 that is minus 30 and it goes there. This is increment from whatever position it is, it adds from here, it adds from here, it adds from here, it adds, it keeps on going from 1, 2, 3, 4 points, this is increment. Absolute is, it always, it keeps on going from one position to another but the, everything is read from the originally. from the originally this dimension is red, this from the originally these coordinates are red. These are how incremental and absolute coordinates could be chosen. Yes, here we have x is equal to a sin alpha, y is equal to b cos alpha. In the ellipse, how do we draw a ellipse? Using that analogy only, we have put this program here and one is the serial number in which p 120 is equal to sin p 100 
P103, P121 is equal to cos P104. We have given the equation of the ellipse here and we have set all the programs in the beginning itself with the starting angle, final angle, how do, what are these, these are all kept here and we run this program to cut the ellipse on this plate. You can say here an ellipse is cut on a plate in which small depth is given, that given is minus 5 millimeters. So, in general the dimensions given in the CNC program is in millimeters only. So, only we have to change this to the our requirements that we have. Sometimes we have the FPS system or we have MKS system. In SI system, it is put as millimeters in general. We can put centimeters or so, whatever we like later. So, this is a program where it is showing the mirror image. You can see the upper part of the program and the lower part of the program is almost same. I can see this is beginning of the profile, it is the end of the profile, it starts and begin, but it is a complete symmetric model along this and this axis. So, you can see these two lines and these two lines are almost similar program with everything same. Only the difference is x 15 is here, x minus 15 is here. Here we have x minus 37.008, here we have x 37.008. So, it is a replica of this program. This is how the mirror image of the program could be put. That means, just in the C coding or Python coding when you do, when you have to repeat an array or so, you take one program, copy it and paste it, just change small variables or values there, you keep on repeating the programs. So, this is how it goes. So, these were a few examples of the part programming where you saw how G codes are executed. These codes could be seen in the simulation also as I said. In the next lecture, I would like to take the 3D slicing. 3D slicing means uh, when we have the uh, file ready in the IGES or STEP format, we convert into at STL format, which is stereolithography format dot STL, and we try to slice that for additive infection that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.